Okay, I'd like to call the Planning Commission meeting to order on Tuesday, March 24th, 2020 at 5.03 p.m. Uh, will everybody please turn off their phones or turn them to silent? Uh, roll call, please. Hurdle? Here. Baker? Here. Uh, Shumway? Here. And uh, Jordan? Here. Um, Bell showing up at 5.30. And March Gretzmacher is inside. Cummins, correspondence and concerns from the public. James, do you want to talk to us about anything else? Okay. If we have anything to discuss other than that, I'm here to represent us. Okay. All right, we did receive one email from Carol and Paul Soper of 2405 Country Walk Drive, Sister Bay. We are concerned about an apparent change in the plans for the schoolhouse property. We were under the impression that four houses or small condos were going to be built there. Now judging from the recently erected sign on the property, a single large condominium building is under construction. Rumor has it to be the same size and design as the building next to Boathouse Restaurant. If this is so, it will be huge sitting up there on the bluff. What has happened to the concept of keeping the image of the village? Three really large buildings, the previously mentioned condo building, the hotel now under construction, and the schoolhouse condo are completely out of character. We suspect it is too late to call a halt to the schoolhouse project now, but it is not too late to stop any like it from the future. I quote from the March 13, 2020 Pulse article, condo proposal sent back to drawing board. If you want to see what it's like to despoil a village, go Sister Bay. You don't want to be another Sister Bay, said Dave Carlson of Main Street Shops. Okay, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. So. Motion by Shumway, second by Baker. Mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I will make that motion. Motion by Baker. Second. Second by Hartwig. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay, item number one, discussion regarding the preliminary plat for Shoreview Condominium, which was submitted by representatives of Harbor Development, SB, LLC, for parcel number 181423001A, which proper T is commonly referred to as the old school property and review of resolution number 418 which approves the plat. Yeah, so this is just the next step in the process for the condominiums to move along. Um, so we just approved the CSM, so now this is the next step for them is to put unit numbers and uh, floor plans and such for that to move forward. Um, we have sent this uh, to the attorney for review and everything was fine. Um, from their standpoint, so just one thing to note is if you approve this, the next step would be uh, obviously the building. Once that's done, they would ask for occupancy permits, and we would not um, give that out until everything has been reviewed and approved by staff. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Otherwise, uh, I've seen our share of it. Motion to recommend to the village board, correct? Yeah. yeah. Move that. Motion by Hartwig. Second. Second by Baker. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Item two, discussion regarding the proposed site plan, building elevation drawings and floor plans and the drainage and utilities plan as well as the property line agreement with Yenny Bexel of Ranja LLC which were submitted by John Sawyer and James Larson on behalf of Husby's JS for the proposed remodeling of a building which formerly housed the Door County Ice Cream Factory Scoop Shop located at 10641 North Bayshore Drive and the parking which will be required for that project. Uh, so this is coming up at the last month of planning commission meeting um, when they presented their plans for uh, this new filling station. Um, at that last meeting they went through a pretty uh, detailed description of the work that's going to be going on. Um, that was just um, more of a recommendation for them to see if they can move forward. So this is the official submission of all the plans and details that they provided. Um, it, pretty much everything that was at the last meeting is in the packet, nothing's mm -hmm. changed. Um, everything is fine uh, from our perspective, from a staff review point. Uh, so this is just basically their official submission to Planning Commission. 
and James did um, have a couple samples. Those are those are just the uh, existing samples on the roof of the scoop shop, which will be continued on to whatever new structure that we build off the front, along with the siding shingles that are now on the face of the front roof peak, which uh, I was supposed to bring here because it's all going back the same. So, does anybody want? somebody to pass them around to view them? I was just going to ask, do you want them to be passed around or do you want to throw them into the middle of the floor? I would like to throw, I don't want to touch them at all. Even, I, could even, I could even walk by and give you a display. <laughs> that would be fine. Six feet. Six feet. Six feet. <laughs> So you can just leave them back by Janelle and they'll right. become part of the official the file. Yep. <laughs> um, as we also discussed um, last month, I felt that um, there would, in my opinion, there would be no additional parking um, required, seeing that it is, it is seasonal and um, weather dependent. I have no further questions. I was waiting for Janelle to stop typing. I oh. venture to bet she was typing the motion. Okay. I've got it done. Okay. Okay. That the plan commission approves the proposed site plan, the building plans, and elevation drawings, the drainage and utilities plan, as well as the property line agreement with Yanni Bexel O'Brien LLC, which were submitted by John Sawyer and Chad Kadanko on behalf of Busby's JS for the proposed remodeling of the building which formerly housed the Door County Ice Cream Factory Scoop Shop located at 10641 North Bayshore Drive and finds that since the season is relatively short and since the Planning Commission has been discussing the possibility of amending the village's parking regulations in such fashion that they state that seasonal outdoor seating shall be excluded when parking calculations are made for any businesses in the village, no additional parking will be required for the previously mentioned remodeling. That's awful long, Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> you had said that the last meeting you wanted your reason for the motion, so there was no doubt. Oh, no, 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 yeah, I know. Um, can we take out that the season is short? Okay, no, okay. I don't think that's here nor there. Okay, So we'll just say that since the planning commission has been discussing, can hear the, the wheels turning, Mary Kay? No, I just, you know, we've, we've had so many issues with parking that I, I don't wonder that the, our actual discussion as to why we decided this shouldn't be recorded, whereas it, it was, she spelled it out pretty good. That's my, my only thought, you know, because. It's just that we determined, period. Well, Which we have the right to do. I'm, I'm not as powerful as as you. I mean, I don't <laughs> think I don't think in your no. manner. So um, that was just my only comment. I just thought maybe because parking is always an issue with everyone that we should have just kept. And we some. can take it on a case by case according to the the zoning code. Um, it's all right. Let's just say we determined that. The additional well, there was seating already there mm -hmm. that they were allowed. Yeah. Um, I can't remember though. J John did say how many were there last month. I do not remember though. How many tables were there? How, the tables the, and chairs. The, in, the increase yeah. over what Todd had. Yeah. So we're going to use a large. I mean, from from what I know is that they had seating three tables, twelve chairs out there. What we're planning on doing inside of like the covered patio is more of a lounge type area right. that we're not looking to pack people into. You know, it's going to be like kind of a 
He showed us the patio furniture. Yeah, it's, it's large. Really, I wouldn't expect more seats to be added necessarily than what was already there existing is kind of what the gist is. Okay, so why don't we just say that the plan commission determined um, that there was seating currently there when it was a scoop shop and that we do not deem additional parking to yes. be required. Yeah. And get rid of that all of other stuff. I think that was that's a good point, Mary Kay. It was previously outdoor seating and the building. The motion. Motion by Baker. I'll second. Second by Shumway. All those in favor is fine with an aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, stay healthy. <laughs> okay, Item so three. Let's make the motion and who second. Mary Kay. Mary Kay. Okay. Item three. Discussion regarding the new retail storage building. The owners of Al Jackson Sweeter restaurant and boutique would like to construct at 10686 North Bayshore Drive and review of the related site plan, building elevation, drawings, and floor plans, drainage and utilities plans, the lighting plan, the landscaping plan. Well, some of that we don't even have, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, okay, so we do not have a landscaping plan. We do not have a lighting plan. Well, that's what those pictures So, we, he is using the same lighting as the buildings next door, so he's providing us with oh, the same pictures. Oh, I see what, yeah, I saw those lighting. pictures, yeah. So the trees are the same type of trees he's going to have. The lighting will be the same that, That's not a landscape plan. No, so we no. don't have an actual landscape okay. plan we'll ask for that. I mean, there's, there's a couple of things that need to get done on this project, so... So, I mean, they don't that. have a lighting plan? Ah, uh, correct. Okay. So they have the site plan, the building elevation, and the floor plans and drainage and utilities Correct. is going off to Robert E. Lee. Correct. Okay, they have a parking plan, color and siding trim samples, as well as a 3D render. Correct, so the one thing that staff has noticed on this, um, throughout this process that we've been working with them is their original plans that they've sent to us, the building is going right over the two properties. Um, they just didn't understand the process that you can't build over a property line, even if you do own both properties. Uh, so what we've asked them to do is uh, get a CSM done that would push the property line so that the building remains <laughs> on one property. Um, so it would be kind of pushing that property line um, over to the Stibor end so that the property line would be between the Stibor and this new retail building. Um, and because they are their own neighbor, they are allowed to change that setback from the neighboring property in the downtown business district. Uh, so that's been done. Um, Freddie has sent us the CSM. Um, they sent it to us two days ago, so we haven't had time to put this in here or anything like that. So that'll have to come at the next plan commission meeting. Um, so the only thing we could do is uh, provide to plan commission what they have sent us so far. Um, we've had some discussion with them regarding parking, and that's why you see um, the highlighted portion on the uh, site plans page. 52. 52 there. Um, I sh have also um, talked to them on there that their parking plan, I believe, it was originally um, 9 by 18 spaces. I had them change it so it's 9 by 20 spaces, <coughs> 9 by 20 size spaces, so they do need parking requirements for that property. Okay. Because this is what I do. Um, <laughs> What is the time frame, if I may ask? Um, as far as this project goes, um, I don't know if they're, they're in a real rush to complete this project or get moving on this. They wanted everything um, from an official standpoint to be done so that when they're ready, they can begin moving. Um, they haven't given me an exact start date. Um, just with everything going on, um, they've kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, they did, however, want to get everything submitted to us. And I, I can admit that it's been a little um, Funky from our standpoint, getting everything from them to get it in with everything going on. I've just been kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off. 
So that's why you don't see an exact landscaping plan because they submitted it and I didn't look at it right away. So I didn't have time to get back to them to get everything that we needed. Um, so to answer your question, I don't know if this will be a two month thing or a five month thing, you know, it could be in the next season. So when they were supposed to be on the agenda last month and I was um, reviewing what they had mm -hmm. submitted then, I realized that the new building was over the property line and they were going to have a CSM, I think, for the entire property line. I had, um, and well, I didn't have an issue with that, but I told Bo if that's what they were going to do and it was all going to become one parcel, that means that they needed to address all the parking for Stabur and all the parking for Al's. So I said if they did not want to do that, they needed to have a different kind of CSM done, taking some of the property from Stabur, redrawing that line. Now, which they have. Done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we just work. don't have it yet. Yeah. Bo does. Um, so, but I do not know. Um, I need to know the square footage of the building, which Bo says is 44 or 57. Correct. I do not have a square footage of um, the parking and the driveway. I do not have square footage of any sidewalks to determine how much open space and whether or not they meet that criteria because they're making the lot bigger. So I don't know what the square foot of the lot is not mm. going to CSM. Which in turn, once we would have that information and knowing the size of the other parcel and what it lost, does that make that parcel non-conforming in any way? Mm. And those, I believe, are answers the plan commission must have. And that's the only reason I asked the question is because I now, having spoken to two surveyors today, am told that the county may or may not, <laughs> the Register of Deeds and Real Property Offices may be closing, in which case we won't have, well, right. we'll we can have a survey, but it won't be a recorded survey. So, delay a lot of projects. You know, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it would be difficult for me to give preliminary approval. Do I like everything that they've done? Yes. The, um, the one thing that we I do know is that they do have the required parking. Um, according to the employee shift and the square footage, they needed 7.6, so you round up to 8. Um, they proposed five, but in the B3 district, you can get a three space credit. So they're putting in the five. So that is okay. They have the one loading, um, which meets the setbacks are fine. The use is fine. Um, but I think we need to know what that lot coverage is and all the other square footage. Unless the rest of you feel differently. No, I agree with you. We should have that. And that's exactly why I asked the timeline. Are we going to suspend our, our thing on building downtown after Memorial Day because of unusual circumstances? That discussion hasn't been had yet, and I don't know if we will ask I can't foresee the future with how long this whole quarantine is going to last, and that's going to be their answer. You know, is it done before then? If not, or we do I, That's a discussion we'll have to have at board meeting. Your crystal ball is broken. You could have <laughs> predicted this it four is. weeks ago. Yeah. What? Unfortunately, it is. Yeah. So shall we table this until next month while we we'll get the information, and then we'll also have the CSM I and think that can be appropriate. We can yeah. I'm I'm kind of comfortable with it the way it is. Al's is one of the businesses that has really tried to follow, but I understand your hesitation, so I will concur with the majority. I, I mean, love everything that they're doing. Just yeah. need to. Yeah. 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 And I, I do want to say that they have been working really well with staff to get stuff done. I know we've been running around like crazy, and you know they submit stuff, and then I let it sit for a few days, and then I forget. Oh, we need this as well, and they jump to it. Got everything to us, so that isn't their fault. 
Uh, I'll say that it's staff's fault. Okay, so is this right? Berto noted that she loves what the Johnson family intends nope. to do. No, take that out. Nothing personal. Okay. No. Berto noted that she does not believe the photos which were submitted as the lighting plan and the landscaping plan are sufficient. She also noted that she does not believe sufficient data has been presented for the planning commission members to make an informed decision regarding whether or not the village's open space requirements have been complied with. Further, she believes um, the plan commission should review and approve a CSM before any formal action is taken on this matter. Uh, no, not that we have to approve it because we would just recommend to the village yeah, board. I, okay. I need to I need to know what the lot size is of the new CSM. Okay. Further, so how do you want that word if she does not believe? No, no approval should be granted. No, no. The it's an incomplete. It's an in, it's an incomplete application as it stands. Period. But that doesn't yeah. give them, let them know what they need. We could let them know what they need. We need to know the square footage of the CSM, which we have not mm -hmm. received. Okay. To make further zoning determinations. Okay. How about in order to make further zoning determinations? Oops. She believes the plan commission must see must see the square footage which is depicted on the CSM. Sure. Okay. And then is it okay if I say the other commission members concur? Yep. Sure. Do you want to look at that? Siding trim sample stuff that was brought in? It's just, just a piece of lumber. <laughs> 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 it'll be the same as the right. current yeah. building. Right. As what? Freddie said it'll be the same as the current building. Yeah. 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 And then there's that 3D rendering. Do you want to see that? I'm assuming it's going to be a grass roof. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Not to say I was. So yeah, assuming. we'll do everything in one fell swoop. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, yeah, the architectural review is fine, the, the sample is fine. And you really can't approve any of that stuff until you get the CSM up. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're just going to table that once to make that motion. I will. I'll second. Motion by, oh, sorry. <laughs> Motion by Bruno, second by Hartwig. All those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay. Item four discussion regarding the provisions of 66.0323 sub H sub 9 of the Zoning Code Special Standards Uses, which states that in the B3 Downtown Business District, Lots shall count right of ways to the center line for purposes of calculating area setbacks and open space. I have no idea where this came from, but when I was doing some research for I don't know one of the projects lately, I came across this. It's like the last paragraph of the chapter. Yeah. And it literally absolutely makes no sense to me why it's there. Because, and unless we wanted to keep it in there, then that right away would also then, just like what, what we dealt with Dollar General, you have to subtract it then for a pervious surface. So I think mm -hmm. to just make it easier, it just doesn't belong. Hmm. Didn't we do something years and years ago with uh, the World Sea Building? Didn't we do something with their setbacks and extend it out into the street? I have no, I have no yeah, recollection yeah. of that. Why would we have done that? They really didn't do anything to the building. 
something about something meeting the setbacks or something that allowed them to well that building is absolutely like every other building downtown yeah. that's old non-conforming yeah so yeah. D Denise, I, I'm in agreement. You think it should just be stricken? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, yeah, otherwise then it's just one other calculation that we would have to go through in any other proposal for a development in downtown. It's not in the B1 or the B2, it's only in the B3. It just simply doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I would... We would you be looking for a motion here. then to yeah, strike? We need a on that one. Okay. So you want a motion for a public hearing? hearing? That we schedule what? I said you want a motion for a public hearing? Yep. So moved. Motion by Shumway. Second. Second by Baker. All those in favor respond with aye. 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 Carried. I'd be curious if I'm just losing my mind or something like that did happen. Ask Marge. <laughs> ask Marge. Okay. Or ask Don. That could have been while I was gone. It may have been. Do you know, you said it was done by ordinance. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Does it say in the code what that date was? I don't think so. Oh. Whoever amended it didn't put it in there. Well, it might say in your amendment, so. In the amendment section where they're in the way back. Yeah. Well, that might be one place to start, Scott, is when, you know, because it, like Janelle said, it should be in the amendments. Is that after land division and after maps? Where is. Yeah. Scott, can I ask what your concern would be? Nothing. I was just bringing it up. I've got no concern. Page 175? Yeah, that's where I'm Oh, so it's way earlier then. Okay. There it is. Don't, don't waste a lot of time on it. It might just be madness setting in. Also in that section, 660323H. One was changed, two was changed. It's, what's the section number? It's H9. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Item 5, discussion regarding the tourist rooming house, short-term rental regulations that were recently passed and adopted in the village of Egg Harbor. Um, I, we almost didn't have this on the agenda, <clears throat> but because we moved the meeting up, I thought at least we could start thinking about it or I could get a feel for the plan commission on whether or not you wanted to have a conversation about this. Did you think it was a good move by Egg Harbor? Egg Harbor did this 20 days ago. It was a different world 20 days ago. I don't, I don't think we should be making any determinations on this. I love the idea of a discussion. I had a lot of thoughts as to how I would do this a little bit differently, um, but I, I just I don't know that I feel that 2020 is the time to be making lodging changes. Well, we could still have the conversations, yeah. just not implement in light of the situation the country and the world is in. And when it's over, then we could be ready to go. I mean, I like, I like some of the things they did because you had a little control over the Airbnb yes. and and the whole garbage thing, which yeah. a lot of neighbors always have a problem with. That's always. One of my bigger calls in the summertime is the garbage crew. My big question is, is it legal? I mean, do, do some of the restrictions on people having to live within so much distance and whatnot, I mean, I know that doesn't always stop us. <laughs> and there's some really good rules that are there, but it, it's the first thing that I, that I was wondering. I'm going to probably have to talk to uh, the administrator from Egg Harbor and see where their reasoning came from and how they're able to defend that. And whether or not they got legal counsel. Yeah, what? because if not, that's, that was yeah. one of the yeah. bigger concerns that I had. I think that it's certainly worth, I mean, there's a number of things in there that are, are worth implementing. And I, I understand there's been a lot of change in 2020. But at some point, if it's a good idea, it's a good idea. And if we think that we really need to to push off implementation on it, let's, let's push it off to a later date. I guess the, the only thing I really wonder is, are we going to have, I mean, we're going to have so many plan commission meetings, but is it, is it important enough to spend the time on, not necessarily the, the concern on the impact? Well, what we could do, um, not knowing, you know, is our next plan commission really going to be virtual? It's going to be happening. Okay. And the only thing we're putting on the agenda are essential items. Okay. So I think we need to start a list of things that are not essential items that we want to get to when we're back to normal. Gotcha. Because yeah, we're going to get there. That's what we'll do. If people bring stuff to us and it's considered not essential, we'll put it on a list and we'll just start going off the order. But don't put them all on one agenda. <laughs> I don't want to see another 11 by 17 agenda. <laughs> I don't think we've been here till 10 o'clock or the plan commission meeting 10 o'clock in several years, and I, that's a good thing. <laughs> I know, but I we also have so many things we haven't dealt with either. It just seems like one thing after another, and we keep pushing agenda items to the next month, to and the next month, to the next well, month. The one thing I do want to add, and we kind of touched base on this, is with the register of deeds out of operations and everything, a lot of these big projects are going to come to a halt because they just they won't be able to continue forward, so it makes no sense for them to try and get in now. So I, I can see it slowing down on the planning commission side after a few weeks of this if this continues at this pace. I presume there's some things that we legally have to deal with in a timely manner. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, I would also say that there's a lot of things on here uh, that people spend a lot of money to get plans in and, mm -hmm. and we don't want to slow them down if that's the case. Okay, so we'll put it on the list of things to talk about <laughs> in the future. With the other hundred things. I'd love to do some research on that because there are those few little issues that we could run into. Okay. But at least you want to talk about it and that's all. Yeah. I think it's, it's yeah. I think it's a great conversation. I didn't realize that people were also pitching tents in these next right. <coughs> okay. Item six, report by the zoning administrator. I know it's short, so. Um, yeah, the first thing I want to talk about um, is that uh, gear property that we've been talking about the last few meetings. Uh, just an update on where we're at with that is uh, on that 12 and a half acre parcel, um, we 
idea of someone that's interested in, in doing a project there, but there's a big question, um, which would be access to 57. Um, and so we've reached out to the DOT. Um, I don't know where they're at with this whole COVID-19 situation, but the last time I spoke with them is they had a joint meeting at the end of the month where this, this would have been brought up for discussion. Um, I have not heard back from them yet. My guess is I will have to reach out to them in the first week of April to figure out if they even discussed it. So that one's kind of a standstill. Um, the second one, uh, just a COVID-19 build response from a zoning perspective. Um, as we are in a declaration of health emergency, I have not had to close any businesses or enforce any of our actions yet. I think everyone's been doing a great job of voluntarily closing down and, and making sure that everyone's safe. Uh, so there's been no issues from a zoning standpoint on that. Um, we have kind of lifted some of the sensitive things about signage. Um, I don't know if you can see that CHOP put up a temporary sign for pickup and delivery. I think those are acceptable for the time being. I didn't sign up. I, with this case of emergency, I decided that it was okay for people to put up the temporary signs for pickup and delivery. So you can see that um, Husby's yes, did that. They put up some small signs for pickup and delivery. One thing I noticed that Wild Tomato did that I didn't appreciate is they had a open for delivery sign when they were closed out on the sidewalk. Yeah, they just left that there. I would tell you with the zero or very little footprint that we have here, I just I have no issue with them leaving it out there right now. So for Chop and Husby's, did you have a picture of the sign before you approved it or you just said hang up whatever you want? Um, well, CHOP, they called and asked what the plan was for that, if they could just put up a sign, and I just, I let them put up the signs. I didn't see any need for it. If it says pick up and delivery, that's fine by us. It's not neon, right? It's not neon. It's, it's just a temporary banner. Well, what about Nate's comment about having an open sign out while you're not really open? Well, I understand that they want to, people to understand that they're not closed the way places are closed isn't that i mean well they just have that that sign on the sidewalk they have a sandwich board on the sidewalk yeah. which admittedly i'm a little bit more sensitive to sandwich board signs <laughs> because of the past but i guess it was it was in one i've been walking out in this village a lot in the last week and when you're trying to walk down the sidewalk and you're trying to, to keep distance that's Kind of an obstacle, and also I don't, I don't appreciate the fact that they're saying they're doing something they're not doing. You know, when they're saying, "Hey, we're open for delivery," it was like seven o'clock at night, and they're closed, and they still have a sign out there. I mean, I, I understand you're not going to be out there enforcing it, but is it, perhaps as you have a conversation, you are you supposed to take in your sandwich boards in here when you are not open. Okay. I can have that conversation. And I there think are a lot more people walking our sidewalks this time of year than ever before with so much time in everybody's hands. <laughs> I think businesses are also trying their hardest to abide by that because, yes, they're still trying to do business as normal compared to what the state has initiated and the, and the nation has initiated. So I think a little leeway is needed with that because a lot of people are suffering in this time for that, and especially our local businesses are taking a huge hit. So I think we need to also look at that point as well. I don't think asking them to take them in during when they're not open. I don't think that's right. I, 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 I agree. If totally. he wants to hang it from the building, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, like CHOP is not taking theirs up and down every day. I um, think Nate makes a really good point about distancing, though. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. The sandwich board's a different piece. That's what I'm yeah, seeing is well, the sidewalk, because that's... Then. That conversation, but to, to Jordan's point, that's why I let those temporary signs go up because everyone's just trying to stay open and do as what they can. But if the signs in the middle of the sidewalk, I agree, that has to be brought in. I mean, chop sign does not have it open. It just says takeout or delivery says, to right, more people. So you don't even know that it's only Friday and Saturday no. or something. They have, they have, they do the social media aspect yeah. of that. They're trying to promote that on that end of it. I know that Al Johnson's has their, their sign out up front that has their hours, but obviously it's not into the sidewalk. It's right. closer to the building, so. It's right next to the door when they're closed. Right, you right. can pull up yeah. and read it. Right. Yeah. 
and I'm not sure if Wild Tomato is the same on that with their sandwich board, if it's just ours, or is it informing people like owls? Like, what, I guess we have to look at that aspect too. Is it the same thing? How, I don't recall. Yeah. There was two words on there, and it was just like carry out, and then I thought there was, I thought there was some indication that they were open too. So it says open on. Okay. Well, I guess we have to look into that to see if that is the case. They only put open on theirs because you get the people driving, and they just want to see, you know, where can I do carry out delivery. So you, they, right. you know, it says that they're open. I think they just mean that they're still operating. Right. You know, not sure. They're ours. We can interpret that in many ways if we yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Well, really, if they get it off the sidewalk. Okay. That, and that's where I can have that conversation. I still feel like they can have the sign up. If, yeah. Just if it's in the sidewalk, we can have that. Uh, do you have a a rolling list of who has asked and who has signs out? Um, yes, it's, it's pretty small. I mean, it's just the restaurants. And then when so would... So that's a yes? You have a list of who has... Well, yeah, I can, I, you know, I can just make a list just because okay. I have a list in my head. Okay. When do we... I mean, I understand why, why you're doing that. I don't disagree with that. But at some point, we have to say, okay, this is over, and then we need to make sure we're contacting those people saying, look, yeah, things are back to how they are. Yeah, I think everyone has an understanding. Yeah. Once this is done, they'll. <laughs> that's that's a pretty big assumption. Yes, it is. <laughs> from from past history. From past history, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Okay, I think I found what you guys were looking for. It was in 2014. 14. So, That's when the board created the ordinance? Mm-hmm. It was calculations. Oh, they are in the B3 zoning district. I'm seeing if I can find the... Yeah. Okay, okay November 18th of 14. So that'll be easy enough to go find the ordinance. And then you'll have your answer. Kurt and Roxanne were there. Huh. Just one, one second. Sure. Um, the final staff is transitioning into web-based meetings. So going forward, it says you will collect tablets and download application and begin to meet via internet. Yeah, that's if it's needed. Because at the time when I was researching things, you know, there would have been a need to collect the tablets and download what needs to be downloaded and redistributed. But I think with the, the the carrier and the service that we're using, I can just send out a link and then you can just download it right from there. But if you need some assistance, I'd be happy to take your tablets and set it up for you. Okay, so then at your next meeting, the only thing you want to address is the public hearing on amendment of section 6603.23? Okay. Yeah. Well, and is that the only thing you have to publish for that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And that will cost a ridiculous amount of money? It's not real bad, but it's got to be published. Like how how much? Under a hundred? No, it's a couple hundred dollars. Okay, let's just wait till we find something else so we can do two things. Okay. That, I mean, does that make sense? That's a really good okay. Yeah. So do you want to meet him in April? Under the circumstances? We well, we have to meet in April because of Johnson's. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Hartwig. Second. Second by Shawnee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.